Almost as soon as there were smartphones, the spyware industry started coming up with technology to use them to spy on us. It's a very secretive world. But now, WhatsApp, part of the Facebook empire with a billion and a half users around the world, is taking one of the biggest players to court. WhatsApp is accusing an Israeli-based spyware company called NSO of selling technology to hack into the phones of 1,400 WhatsApp users. Will Cathcart is the head of WhatsApp, which has just launched a huge legal battle against NSO, accusing it of breaching one of his company's core principles, privacy. As a product, this is about trying to help you have the digital equivalent of a face-to-face -face conversation. A face-to-face -face conversation with someone else is inherently very private. The NSO group is an Israeli cyber intelligence giant that says it helps governments investigate terrorism. They're based just outside of Tel Aviv, but their technology is sold around the world. So who exactly uses the technology? Well, Canadian researchers at U of T's Citizen Lab say governments with questionable human rights records like Mexico and Saudi Arabia have hired NSO to spy on human rights activists. How would that work? Well, Citizen Lab says it's done by hacking your smartphone, that spyware lets clients read what you write, listen to your calls, and siphon off your personal photographs and files, that it can even remotely turn on your microphone and eavesdrop on you. Then there's the murder of Jamal Khashoggi. Omar Abdulaziz, a Saudi dissident based in Montreal, filed a lawsuit alleging NSO helped Saudi Arabia's royal court spy on his conversations with Khashoggi through his phone. NSO's founder denied it during an interview with 60 Minutes. We had nothing to do with this horrible murder. But now WhatsApp says they can prove that NSO technology was used to hack their users' accounts to spy on activists. After the lawsuit was filed, Cathcart published an op-ed in the Washington Post writing, while their attack was highly sophisticated, their attempts to cover their tracks were not entirely successful. Joining me to talk about this is John Scott Railton. He's a senior researcher at Citizen Lab at the University of Toronto's Monk School. He's been studying this issue for years and helped WhatsApp with their research. So, John, now WhatsApp has launched this lawsuit against NSO. How, how big a deal is that? This is a pretty big deal. It's a milestone for the protection of user privacy in general. It's also a very big deal. I think it's going to be the first step in reining in an industry that is clearly rife with abuse. What are you hoping that this leads to? I think we are going to see where this goes. One hope is that this lawsuit contributes to much greater transparency and public understanding and legal understanding of the scale of the abuse problem and the ways that these companies behave when they think no one is looking. So what kind of change are you expecting or hoping for? Up until now, the commercial spyware industry has operated with a kind of a veil that protects it from discovery, but also a veil that protects it from accountability. And the way that I look at this in simple terms is, for years, the spyware companies have been the playground bully. Suddenly, somebody's older cousin has shown up, and they are back against the wall and trying to figure out how to respond. And their public statements and partial denials and contradictory claims seem to suggest that they're still working on that. John, we reached out to NSO about this. They dispute the allegations. They're going to fight it. Uh, they say they help governments find the bad guys, not the good guys. And, the, and this quote, Techno their technology is not designed or licensed for use against human rights activists or journalists. What do you say to that? Well, I think that companies like NSO are basically selling an end run against a couple hundred years of constitutional jurisprudence to protect people's private rights. And what they're just saying is, have no warrant, no problem. Use this technology. Your targets can be in your country, and they can be overseas, and you can do whatever you want. And it turns out that when you put that kind of powerful, unaccountable tool in the hands of a lot of governments, of course they're going to abuse it. And many of the customers that we think are using this technology are like serial offenders. This isn't the first time they've bought this spyware, and it's not the first time that they've abused spyware to target human rights defenders, dissidents, journalists, lawyers, and others who they have a bone to pick. At the end of the day, the thing that has happened that's new is that until this point, the commercial spyware industry has basically said, look, 
We sell to governments, that makes us legitimate, but we don't know what they're doing, so we shouldn't be responsible for how they use it. And the lawsuit, although I'm no lawyer, basically says, look, NSO is way closer to this process than they admit, and moreover, they should be held accountable for breaking rules and laws and how this technology actually works. So I wonder, I've noticed in the past that one of the founders in particular has said, you know, we just sell the technology, we don't know exactly how it's applied, and we don't want to know, and yet they also say, no, 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 we were not involved in the, in the Khashoggi, in the, in the, the connections that were made uh, that ended up with Khashoggi being, being murdered. Like, how can they say they don't know, they're not involved, but they know that they weren't involved? Like, that doesn't seem to make any sense. It's an industry full of contradictions. And if you track the public statements of these spyware companies, you'll find that there are contradictions wherever you scratch. Just as when we track where their spyware shows up, we find abuses almost wherever we scratch. What is the most outrageous thing that you've seen that you can tell us about that, that you think that this technology has led to? The victims of this technology include women who've been the victims of cyber violence, the family members and close contacts of people who have been assassinated, journalists, their minor children, people whose colleagues have been killed while practicing journalism. The cases, each one is troubling in its own way, and together they create a pretty ghastly picture of a global abuse problem. John Scott Railton, thank you so much to follow here. Thanks so much. Great questions.